So we're back again, and what we're going to do in this chapter is we're going to start out a little bit easier. We're going to go and get the CryEngine launcher from CryEngine.com, and then we're going to basically create a flow graph node that we can expose inside of the editor. So my name's Colin, and I'm here with Philip. And let's do it. Let's do it. So if we open up the browser of your choice, and go to cryengine.com, we'll be able to download the launcher, assuming that you were logged in. If you're not logged in when you go to cryengine.com, simply select get cryengine and go through the necessary steps, eventually leading to you downloading the launcher, just like this. Okay, so it's a nice little executable. Yep. This executable is actually responsible for downloading engines and keeping them up to date. This allows us to just manage our projects, manage the engines, and just use CryEngine in a more easy fashion. Uh, so let's just install that to the default location. And hope everything goes all right. Yeah, it's pretty quick. Not too bad. Yeah. Pretty quick. I feel like you lied to me. It is pretty quick. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad. No, that's true. It's fine. So let's start the CryEngine launcher and see what it has in store for us. Ah, oh, yes. Yes. So let's log into an account. And here we go. This is the default launcher window after you have uh, logged in for the first time. As we can see, the launcher clearly wants us to create a project. How about we start doing that? Yep, let's do it. So we want CryEngine 5.2. Mm -hmm. And Can we do a question. Blank? Yeah, let's just do a blank. Do that. blank? Yeah. Do, you, do what do you think would be better? No, blank is fine. But we could explain what types of templates there are. So as you've seen in our previous example, blank is equivalent to game zero, meaning a game with practically zero anything just blank and the ability to move around or move the camera that's it otherwise we have a bunch of other templates that allow you to start development of a title uh, assuming that these things fit your genre like you could go for the first person shooter template that allows you to make a first person shooter fairly easily keep in mind that these are super basic though there's not it's not a sample it's just a template allowing you to use this as basically a building block or a base. And I think as time goes on, what we're going to do is we'll keep elaborating with mm -hmm. the samples. And then you'll get complex functionality, whether it be Teams, networking, or UI. But in essence, this right here is just the foundation. Exactly. And then as it goes forward, you would have a sample that basically proves the template being worthy and building up from there. Exactly. So if soon after 5.3 launch, we should also see the first of these samples going out, meaning a first-person shooter sample with some multiplayer functionality. Uh, it's a cool thing that we'll be sharing more about in the future. Okay. But let's start with the blank project now and simply let's save it to the desktop. That's the easiest way. We need to create a new folder. We do. So we just call it, uh, let's just say, my project and press OK and then create the project. And now, what the launcher does is it tells you, okay, you need to download an engine and you need to download the base project files. Uh, once we do that, it will take a while, as we see here. But once it's done, we'll have the engine installed and ready to use. The next step is to start running the project. So if we launch the editor, we can actually see what's going on. This here is the engine starting. Yeah, it's yeah. going. You have to be patient a little bit. I mean, this computer is not a uh, not running like dual titans or anything. <laughs> but the editor will start up, and I think this was game zero, correct? Where? Yeah, this is the blank game template. It's slightly different from game zero, but it's practically the game con same concept. I see. I'm trying to think what ha what is in there. You have the anim entity. Geom entity. Mm -hmm. So basically, see what things. we have. We just load a level quickly. So 
exactly what we had before. Exactly, except we're able to move things. If we wanted to, I could move this to the other side of the map. But I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tease them. <laughs> yeah, so this is just the editor allowing us to modify the level and basically do anything we want and then save or export in order to view the level in the launcher. Okay, wait, before you close, mm -hmm. can we open up Flowgraph just to see what comes with oh, it? Sure. And then what we're going to add in essence. So yeah. So as you noticed earlier, these are actually spinning. And that's something we do in Flowgraph. Increase the size of this window a bit so we can see. Mm -hmm. There's not much to it. First note here is some debugging. So when you press T, this signal is sent out, which then sets a string to a certain object and loads the geometry, which means that just pressing T will replace the object. I think it does. Does it change it? So if we actually click it? A very good question. Do you want to try it? Yeah, sure. You're being very brave. Ah, it works. Yes. It's perfect. Cool. All right. And you also see that they're spinning. And that's because of the rotate entity node. Very simple logic. Uh, doesn't really do much, but it allows us to see how we can do very basic logic in Flowgraph. Mm -hmm. Cool. So if we close this level, or close the sandbox entirely, we can have a look at the code. So what we can do is press the cogwheel and reveal an explorer in order to see everything that's tied to this project. The primary thing we're interested in, in is the .cry project file. This file is a helper to indicate the cry engine everything that's tied to your project. And it also has a few shell extensions, so you can automatically launch the editor, uh, launch the game, or if you're using C Sharp, also edit the source code, in addition to editing the code. So if we do this now, we could just say generate solution. And yes. Exactly, now we get an error. So we need to go to uh, cmake.org and actually install cmake. This is the build system we're using now. We're actually going to start using this for building the engine itself in Fab and Free, uh, but we'll have a separate tutorial for that. Open a browser window at cmake.org and press download. Then we can scroll down and just install the latest 3.7 release. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. And this right here, it allows us to generate the solution for Visual Studio, correct? Would this work for C-sharp or? C-sharp does not require CMake right now, but we have made a few advancements for Fab and Free that improves C-sharp quite a bit and actually makes it use CMake in a way in order to create a unified workflow. But for now, you don't need it to use C-sharp. It is, uh, it shows right there. So you have Linux, Windows, uh, and Mac even, so it's across all platforms. Yes, so in the future we could utilize these on other platforms as well. As soon as that finishes downloading, we'll be able to take a look at installing CMake and then generating a solution. All right, so now that it's installed, or we've downloaded it, we can install mm -hmm. CMake, so let's run it. And close this browser window. Yep. Next, we accept. We do and accept. We actually do want to add this for all users, just to make it easier for ourselves. Which I think even in the warning message, it did say you need to add this to the path for all users. Did you notice that? It might have said that, yeah. I didn't mm. notice. It's very helpful. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's always useful to have error messages to tell you exactly what's wrong. Actually, before, since we're waiting on it, mm -hmm. what, what did uh, Visual Studio, they, they're actually going to be integrating CMake more and more, correct? Oh yeah, with Visual Studio 2017, they have native support for CMake, which means that you, instead of opening a solution, you just open a directory and then build that. It's something we've been playing around with a bit. And then when the official 2017 release comes around, you should be able to build CryEngine using the native Visual Studio CMake support, which will be very cool. Yeah, so it's a logical move from WAF over to CMake. Oh yeah, oh, it exactly. integrates seamlessly with Visual Studio instead of having a, a third-party tool that not everyone knows. And it was quite specialized, correct? WAF was custom-built oh, yeah. for our own thing. It was an existing system, but we extended it quite a bit. 
these are the core pillars of a project. The assets, basically the game folder, as we mentioned before, uh, the binary, which is the DLL we'll be compiling, and code. So code won't actually be shipped, neither will these files, but these three are constitute a project and everything that's required to run it. So let's right click the game.cry project file again and generate solution, see if we get any further. As soon as this is done compiling, we'll have a new binary output right here that we can use and run. So, exactly. So now we have new binaries with a PDB file, program database. And we could just try running it very quickly and just close Sandbox afterwards just to see if it works. Sandbox booting. As you'll notice again, a lot of the temporary files pop back up when we start the game. Those are fine to remove. If you notice any visual artifacts, it all, it's always good to just close Sandbox, delete these files and try again, just to see if it was something corrupt instead of an actual bug.